January isn't known for its riding conditions here in the UK. But it's when my birthday falls, so each year we set out for a ride and cross our fingers. This year we wanted to go to the seaside, and so we were sat on the train to the Ayrshire coastline, southwest Scotland, and the sun was shining. You ready? <laughs> Just days before, this coastline had been battered by one of the heaviest storms in decades, which felt hard to believe now. We were in that peculiar calm between two fronts. True to form, this trip would give us a fittingly wild ride. But right now, staring out to pitchy skies and welcoming seas, it was hard to imagine any of that would come. It would be a tale of three hearts. What do you think? So we got in quite late and we're now camped about five miles south of Air. Yeah. That sunset was absolutely beautiful. It was really, really beautiful. We had some food and now we're sort of hunkering down for the night so we can get cycling tomorrow. We'll see you in the morning. See you in the morning. Good night. Night. So we had this trip that was coming up and the one thing that I had said was like I wanted to go to the seaside but we knew we wanted to come to Scotland because it's maybe some of our last chances to come up to Scotland. Yeah. And every time we go up into Scotland, we always go really up high into the highlands or to the islands, which I think is where all of the most obvious beauty is. And every trip has been amazing. There's a reason why it, yeah, it is it's, it's so obviously beautiful. Um, but then we saw this route on the coastline. We yeah. wanted to follow a route from uh, this Bikepacking Scotland book and this was the one that went on the coastline and it is in the southwest and it's a part that we've we've cycled we've, yeah. from Glasgow down into England and up and down that way a few times but we've never actually done a specific cycle within the south like the lowlands of Scotland. No I think we've come to this area as well to get ferries across but we've never sort of stayed and explored this part so we thought it would be really nice to come and explore. So it's the end of January there's no other we just saw some be like, why have you come at this time of year? Yeah, <laughs> I think we're bonkers. I think there was big storms last week, so I just yeah. said it could have been worse, it could have been last week. But 100 mile per hour winds they had last week, and today it's quite still, there's a little breeze. There's meant to be storms picking up later. I think we'll work that later, but... Are we going to start off with breakfast on the beach? On the beach. Is that too much or is that okay for you? That's good for me. Hold up. 
Thank you so much. There's something very soothing about these sleepy coastal areas. Some of the few landscapes where humans haven't visibly left such a footprint. That's why we picked the coast for this trip. A slow bike amble to take it all in. Okay, where are we off to? We're off to Given. Are you Gervan. sure? Gervan? Gervan. Gervan? I think it's Gervan. Spelt G-I-R-V-A-N. Yeah, I think it's Gervan. We've said it multiple ways. Gervan. 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 It's Gervan. <laughs> Quite quickly, we realised this route would be right up our street. It wasn't direct. Instead, it was constantly dipping and swinging between these lesser visited areas of beauty and intrigue. Perfect. These are the kind of places we like to get distracted with. Yeah. Should we go down there? Yeah. It's these experiences which I find make for a really memorable cycle. And show you this wonderfully warm and captivating side of Scotland which we've fallen in love with. So that would be my great grandfather. That was my grandfather, but that was my great grandfather. He was married to a Simpson. Now, uh, I'm not sure about the Simpson because I think the Simpson he was married to didn't have a P in the name, I think it was SIM. So there was three great grandfathers and a grandfather wow. out there. <laughs> wow, that's amazing. Dave told us that in 1883, his great granddad was one of the local fishermen who'd rescued Captain Peter Maersk Muller the grandfather of the shipping container giant, Merce. We were chatting to Dave for nearly an hour. Such a warm and fascinating guy. You ready? We're going to a castle? Yeah, let's go to a castle. Can you, can you see anything? No. <laughs> Scotland is filled with history and natural beauty, but it's the people that really make it special to us. We spent the day hopping along the coastline, from intrigue to intrigue, conversation to conversation. The Dunyore Castle was built in the 13th century, and its Celtic name is derived from Fort of the Yew Tree. And this was all more information told to us by friendly locals. Time is it's under a lot of layers. 2.38 How far have we cycled? Not very far at all. About five. We keep chatting with people. We do keep chatting with people. Some really lovely people telling us lots about the area and the history and locals and local rivalries and about and routes Rupert around Mark. the area and yeah. geocaching. So some really interesting conversations, but it means that we've not made very much way at all. What, what's your problem? Is that there's just so much to stop and look at? But also that there's a storm coming in later. Oh, there's a storm. Very heavy in winds later. coming later. Yeah. We thought we were going to get a lot further down the coastline. So Sooner we than we thought as well. It seems to be coming in now. The weather report has changed. So we will see how that goes. The intention for this ride was go slow, take things easy, and get distracted. We had time. We weren't bothered about miles and it all fit perfectly with this beautiful weather. And who says Scotland is always raining, hey? Mm. Yeah? I have to do my word. What is it? It's like a snowball we think. I, I have an edge of coconut. That's really nice. It's like creamy. Really Did you want one? We looked across to Isla Craig, the volcanic island off the mainland. Amazed by these winter conditions, but aware it was all due to change soon. 
but we'll have to find a camping spot. Yeah, the wind is freaking me out a little bit because it's meant to get really, really windy. So I just don't want to be somewhere too exposed, but also not somewhere under lots of trees that could fall on us. Or so, lots of people. Yeah, so that's so. on my mind a little bit. But otherwise, completely carefree. Yeah. <laughs> So we've just been chatting with locals, more locals we've been chatting with, and there's gale force winds coming in tonight and that carry through until kind of like midday tomorrow. So we're gonna hope that the winds are not too heavy for the tent because it's not a four season tent, it's kind of a lighter weight MSR tent. So if there are, it says there's gusts up to 80 miles an hour. So we're hoping we can find somewhere a bit more sheltered for the tent maybe behind a building or something because the 80 miles just straight on the tent uh, I think it's going to be it's going to be sideways but this sunset is absolutely unbelievable it's beautiful and so the plan was we'd soak up the sunset explore a nearby harbour and try and find a sheltered spot for the night It's an interesting feeling anticipating a storm in a tent. You keep positive, yeah, so pitch everything as securely as possible, and hope the broken tent poles last. You hunker down and wait. It's all it's out of your hands now. A guide from night. Feeling about the pitch? Absolutely terrific. I think it's one of our best pitches yet. It looks really firm. 8.54. Gradually getting a bit windier. We've not been too sure about tonight and the next couple of days. The forecast has said that there is pretty strong winds, but then everyone that we have met today has said that there's gale force winds and really been saying about the storm which is coming in. And they were like, you, you shouldn't be cycling tomorrow. You shouldn't be cycling through this week. Where, like where you camp tonight, you, you need to be in like a safe place tonight, which has got us a bit more worried about it. But yes, yeah, so we're, we're now in a camper van park on a bit of grass. Pitched all the guide ropes. Every single one. Every single one. <laughs> really, really tight. We're gonna just see how it goes. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Have you got it? Got it. Happy birthday, dear Josh. Happy birthday. Oh, <laughs> Yeah, we've got the last bits of coastline to enjoy the stormy sea. Yeah. And then we can head inland and try and dodge some trees. Yeah, because I dodge trees. Keep <laughs> you dry. Good luck. Good luck. Our camping spot had done a good job sheltering us from the full force of the wind. We actually got a pretty good night's sleep. But conditions were due to continually worsen through the day. Ready? Ready? Yes. 
start service again, please be careful because in the ghost hats it was just getting me, honestly, and I can't. Yeah, I like, yes. Yeah, okay. Might have to wait out and come Yeah, we'll take it as it comes. Aye. Just, just as long as you're careful, he's yeah. okay. Yeah, okay. Alright, thank you. See ya. See how it goes. Okay. Operation, see how it goes. The winds were coming straight inland from the sea and were due to stick around for the next few days. Though it was incredible feeling the full force of nature, it wasn't safe cycling on exposed roads with cars. And so we decided to reroute away from the coastline. As we're moving inland, we definitely swapped the wind for the rain. We're both being really, really chilly and both really want to warm up a bit so we're hoping we can find a little cafe so we can have a cup of tea <laughs> just warm ourselves up because it's really cold and it's really windy Our new mission was to find a hot cup of tea. I have to make sure it's properly pressure washed and re waterproofed and do all the maintenance. There is a special kind of happiness getting pounded by the conditions and then sheltering in a friendly cafe, drinking tea and eating cake. To be honest, before I was feeling a little bit demoralised and that kind of like calf lunch was just exactly what we needed. Warm you. <laughs> I'm ready for the road. Ready. Giving even more of a tailwind, there was a real treat waiting for us further along the trail. Yeah, I am uh, definitely supposed to be out the wind and the rain. So as a um, little birthday gift from our family, they set us up in um, some really lovely accommodation in along the, the, the route that we've been doing. Mm -hmm. And yeah, this is, we never ever stay yeah, in accommodation. A real, real change for us. So it feels, um, it feels a little bit peculiar, but... Um, Very luxurious compared to our tent. <laughs> yeah, but really lovely. We're on the kind of grounds of like this this big estate. This big castle. I think we were saying on the way here that 
in the last four or five years since we've been in the UK, there have been two <laughs> stays in accommodation yeah. besides like, you know, like campsites and things. Mm. One was a premier inn, the other was a holiday inn. So this is... Um, very different to that. Very different to that. Well, actually, like quite well rested. Um, yeah, that's good. Yeah, yeah, no, I do. Um, and today we're gonna gonna go off and explore. Yeah. Try and find some other castles, some off-road trails. Yeah. Yeah. Here we go. Okay. With the weather calmer, the trip slipped back into its relaxed state and we set off to ramble around the Scottish lowlands. Here where we are, Boo? Rambler territory. In Rambler territory. Yeah, that's our type of territory. You ready to bike ramble? Yeah. The bike ramblers. <laughs> Right now, the weather was pretty calm, but due to get rough again later. But knowing we were going back to warmth and shelter, no concern about where to picture the elements, it gave a real sense of security we'd not experienced on bike trips before. Looks like the rain is. That looks really wet. And we're just enjoying our lunch. Last little bit of the trip. Yeah, this is some really nice riding. A little bit rainy, so the trees smell really, really nice. And a little bit of off road as well. It felt kind of strange, on a bike trip, but sitting in the warmth in front of a fire. Showered and well rested, cold drink from the fridge, and with no other weary travellers potentially coming in through the night. It all felt pretty novel to us. We saw a pack of Scotch broth in the little village shop, and I've never had Scotch broth. Have you ever had scotch broth? I think so. Um, so we're going to try and make scotch broth. First time staying at a castle. A first time seeing this side of Scotland. And the first time feeling this chilled out on a bike trip. After a wintry day, wintry day cycling, that's so good. We tucked into our first scotch broth. Our guards dropped and we felt truly relaxed. Have you ever worn the same underwear twice in a row? Oh God, like every day. <laughs> <laughs> every, yeah. I've got a two, two day rule. I mean, unless, I'm, unless I'm running. Uh, yeah, every, every day. <laughs> and we've just been cycling, we've been wearing the same socks for five days. Yeah, no, no. <laughs>
it was a slow pack up, ready to cycle towards train strikes and a hilly ride home, starting work again early the next day. We do truly feel at home in a tent, amongst nature and in the elements, but we set off, both quite amused at how relaxed and energised we felt, extremely grateful for the experience. straight from the sea but the nice is you can just smell all the salt in the air which is really quite nice. You never know what to expect with winter trips in Scotland and this final ride showed us just that in a 15 mile window. Stormy skies and uncertainty, feeling the wrath of nature but give it a chance and you'll experience points of wild beauty and inspiration that makes it all worthwhile.